Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's really nice to see everyone here. Um, and it's, you know, something like, I just want to pinch myself and check uh, if this is real. Because two years we have been on the virtual mode. And I have been in a mode which says, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you are. <laughs> and I could stop with good afternoon today, which is really nice. So I hope um, this session will be interesting and we'll have questions. I'm like everyone, I'm here today, tomorrow. I think some of you may not come tomorrow, but we can catch up later. So we can get started. Uh, I'm going to talk about this product called uh, OpenShift Dev Spaces. I am the product manager for this product. Um, we'll see where this is placed uh, in the overall uh, developer's life. So this is how we are going to spend our time for the next couple of minutes. Um, we're going to talk about why Dev Spaces, you know, we keep talking about products, so you can ask me, why should I use another product? So we'll answer that question. What is it and where does this reside? All of that will be answered. We'll also talk about a bit of background and history because every product is born with a purpose. So we'll understand what's the purpose for dev spaces. And then, yeah, the introduction will continue, probably one more slide, and then where is all of this supported? Um, that, that's something we'll talk about. What's your roadmap? And this is a product, right? So this is not... Yes, I had an idea, but that idea has been built. And some of the resources that you can use uh, to kind of uh, learn more about it, talk to us, uh, give us some ideas, and then we'll have a small demo of, yes, this is all not slideware. It does work in real life. So th that, that's how the next couple of minutes will go between us. So why dev spaces? Um, this is the key question I want to answer before going any further. Now, I think this slide you will see for probably all, all presentations, but this is the start, right? I mean, this is how everybody's life is every day. I mean, we all live, breathe this slide. So as an individual, I mean, I think I need not go in detail, but in a developer uh, flow, we have two things. One is the inner loop, the other is the outer loop, right? So inner loop is where dev spaces sits and and that's being used by an individual. As a developer, we use it every day, where our day-to-day -day job is to code, to build that, test that, debug, deploy. At, at some point in time, we are kind of, yes, you know, I, I, I got my task, I did it beautiful, I think everyone will like it. Then you push, then the outer loop kicks in. So dev spaces sits here. Now, and, and there are a plethora of developers available today, right? So because every one of us, uh, who have spoken before me were asking, how many of you are developers? How many of you are using VS Code? And, and then for everything, there are a couple of hands that go up and down, right? So we, we have developers are not just using one tool, one language, you know, they are familiar sets for everyone and that's not a mistake, right? I mean, that's how the world is. And tomorrow, by the time I talk, there are a million tools coming, million tools shutting down. So that, that's the life, right? So. There are multiple developers, and, and, and all of this means the skill sets need to be upgraded, which is really tough. I mean, these are some of the sessions you come to, but there will be a parallel session happening for another product. So we have a, a, a wide range of developer, and, and now everything is cloud, right? I mean, wherever you go, it, it's cloud. So some people like cloud, some people have time to learn cloud, some, some applications are born on the cloud, and so are the developers, right? Some are like, I only want to code wherever it is. So, you know, it's, it's cloud, not cloud. Wherever it is, give me something, I just want to uh, code. And that are the majority set of people. That's what we have found out. And then there is the mis mixed bag, right? Yes. I started as a career when I did everything on my laptop. Then the cloud came. You know, I joined the journey. I know a bit of it. And then there are some like, yes, you know, I know everything in cloud. So there are this set of people. And I know everything on cloud is, is a very small set. So what happens when most of your production application moves on the cloud, but, you know, development is still happening locally? You know, how, how do we bridge the gap? So that is an important question that, you know, remains unanswered or it's there somewhere in the mind, but we just keep developing. So this is a double clip of the developer flow. So we have a set of products that, that help you code, that help you debug, the set of product that will help you build package, and that is what you've been seeing in the individual sessions. So if you see um, dev spaces, and, 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 and these set of developers, like I said, someone, some, some people are like, give me something to code, I will code, 
finish it and then my life is done. Dev Spaces fits that kind of cloud, uh, crowd where it says, I just need a development environment, I have a task in hand, I just want to spin up something, get coded, get done with it, right? That, that, that's where um, Dev Spaces lies, it's in the, in, the, in the upper quadrant there. And then the other tools we are hearing and listening to. Now, these are some of the challenges that we have seen as we speak to many uh, people out there. One is productivity, right? Like I said, a developer comes in, I mean, that's the challenge for all of us. A developer comes in, then you have to get the laptop, you know, put multiple tools, then security to it, then, I mean, there's so much of complexity to get a developer up and running. So that, that productivity is lost, right? I mean, and then you get bored. You join an organization, it takes you so long to get familiar with the tools, and end of it, there may not be some familiar tools you'll have to relearn, right? And then the complexity starts. And then this term, right? I mean, this is something like we were looking forward to COVID. We want to eradicate COVID. And one thing as developers or products, when we develop one word we want to eradicate is, it runs on my machine, right? <laughs> that's, that's the word I hate, the, I hate the most. Like it runs on my machine. It doesn't run on mine. I mean, I'm not bluffing. So this fight is something that is again making it unproductive. That's something we wanted to solve. The third one is, Production environment versus your dev environment, right? I mean, this is like, uh, I keep, you know, telling people, this is like us coming out of colleges, right? So we studied like um, 16 subjects, 18 subjects, and when I came first, joined the job, none of it, or till date, I've not used anything, been 15 years in IT kit. So this is like that, right? In the development system, everything works. When it moves to production, there are issues. So this is trying to bridge the gap as close as the production environment is. That is one of the key challenges that we have seen. Skill sets, I spoke about it, like, as I talk, I know there's another product, somebody is coming up, my competitor is coming up with something, I myself am getting ideas, so I'll come up with another product. And to bridge the skills, it's going to take us a long time. So that's something we said, okay, skills that side, but the basic thing is to code and have a nice application that runs and kind of meets the user needs. So that was something, and, and, and then to upskill is, is, is really a hard task. So that is something that we wanted to solve. Hardware legacy, security, right? The code should never lie on the edge, right? I mean, on the networks, there are a lot of applications that are sensitive. We were talking about some of the very important applications, even in the morning panel discussion, and there are some security issues and stuff like that. And sometimes having the source code on the laptop itself is a risky situation for some of the customer applications. So we said how we could all, you know, come up with something that solves this basic purpose, and that's how Dev Spaces was born. Um, so we thought we want to keep development very simple and very fast and as close as cloud native, and that is the thought we, uh, we, we thought that would solve all of these three problems. Keep it very simple, and it has to be fast, right? Because today everything is agile, right? I mean, that's the other misused words. Agile means fast. Sometimes it's fragile, right? So that we have to still keep it fast, as fast as possible. And then, you know, skills needs to be upskilled. I'm not saying, you know, you should never skill. But, you know, that gap shouldn't hit you really hard when, when you're putting things on production. So those are the th themes that if you actually look at our roadmap, we actually build every release and our release cycle typically for this product is about six to eight weeks. Again, we are agile, but uh, our themes are simple. Keep, you know, we try to make dev spaces as simple as possible because, and then as fast as possible, right? I mean, you don't want to click a button and then wait forever, you know, that round and round and round, not that. And then as seamless as it's cloud native. So those are the three themes we keep in mind and every feature that we put in the product has to hit one of these buckets. So that, that's the check gate for us. Now, I'm, I'm talking about dev spaces, but until June or until May, we had this product called the Code Ready Workspaces. We renamed that as dev spaces. So these two are same. Some of us, we keep saying Code Ready Workspaces, dev spaces. We just not got that lingo sometimes right because Code Ready Workspaces is deep in our you know, brain. So, the new name for that is OpenShift Dev Spaces. And we did the rebrand uh, I mean more to align to the overall branding and stuff like that. But the intention of the product to be simple, fast, and cloud-nating hasn't changed. 
So this is more aligning to the, so when, when we came up with a new release 3.0, in June we came up with all sh new and shiny, right? We had a new logo, we used to have the C, some of us joke this is like a neck pillow, but <laughs> now we have a nice logo, and then we have a new name, and then new documentation, everything is new, but the intent or, or the, the problems that the product solves is, is, remain the same. And we also had used this opportunity to kind of um, change a bit of architectural switch we wanted to make to make things more, again, simple, faster, and cloud native. So this is typically compares what was there before 3.0 and you know what, what's there in the new end. Just to bring in what, what was changed in the architectural side, right? So we had all of our workspaces managed by a Java REST API, but now it's, it's, it's all managed by as a Kubernetes API, which kind of gave us more flexibility, uh, make it, making it more scalable, a bit more faster, because when you launch a workspace, it's, it's much faster now than before. And, and then it also, we also kind of sorted some of the authentication things. I mean, we used to use a Red Hat SSO, now we use OpenShift OAuth. So it makes it much, much flexible, simpler, and, and, and easy. So this is, we, we'll see some part of 3.0 as a demo. Now, so this is in, 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 in kind of summary what dev space is it. So you can use your familiar tools on the cloud and get a workspace started to develop. So you can use a familiar IDEs. At the moment, I mean, Eclipse TI is, is the IDE of, by default. But our next release is geared up to support VS Code um, as, as, the, as, as the default IDE and eventually IntelliJ. And, and VS Code and IntelliJ are tech preview, so you could go and try now and have a hang, but we're trying to get, get that on production. And then some of these customers, uh, as we talk in the next slide, um, are our secure environments. You know, I think a lot of questions came up on the security as well. And this product, like I said, is a downstream of an upstream product called Eclipse J. So uh, a bit of background on that is um, when I said code-ready workspaces, so it's there in the market for last six years or so. It was, I mean, it, we acquired it from a company called Code Envy. So it's been in the market for some time, and the upstream for us is Che. So Che, whatever you see, probably six weeks prior, will be in dev spaces six weeks later. So um, that, that, that's the stuff. And there are a lot of uh, financial companies and a lot of security. I think today there were questions on, you know, or how, you are open, but is it secure, you know? There are customers who work with really secure environments, and yes, this is secure, so we wanted to take care of that aspect as well, right? Because putting on cloud should not put you in that risk or fear of, you know, where this is going to land. So that is also happening, but with VS Code coming in, we have some cool stuff happening, like, you know, pair programming and stuff like that, so, and, and, and then this is all, using a dev file. I think we've seen enough of dev file as well in our, in our topic. And that is how, um, I mean, and dev spaces is, comes free with OpenShift, and that, that's the good news as well. I mean, you don't have to pay extra or more for dev spaces. It comes free with OpenShift subscription, and um, it's, it's available on the operator hub. So you could go and search for dev spaces, and you would um, see that. And I will also, uh, and, and if you want to really try this without buying OpenShift, there's something called the developer sandbox that we've been talking about. I think Mohit did talk about uh, the, the free subscription. So um, dev spaces is there. The latest version is up there. So you can go and try and, and see how really all of this, you know, is, is, is truth. So, so this is, you know, what you typically support. I mean, I think this is one thing that I get asked wherever I go is, all is fine, but what do you support? What languages do you support? what repositories that you can support, um, you know, what browsers can this run, what OCP version is the bare minimum. So this slide is more details into, you know, what stack do we support and what all you can use to run. And this one, the logo below, is, is to kind of more feel confident saying, you know, I'm not doing this um, presentation for the first time. And then saying, okay, guys, try out, tell me how this is. Did you like it? No, yes. I mean, this is not my cooking, right? So this has been there for some time. Customers have embraced it, and customers have embraced it across verticals. So we have customers from telco, healthcare, some of them I cannot name for confidential reasons. We have government customers as well, not just in Asia Pacific, but North, uh, North America and, and, and EMEA, name it. We have customers there, big customers, secure, you know, small and medium customers. So customers of all size, 
and from all verticals. So that, that this is more to kind of say that, you know, you're not going to be, you know, testing this first and then, you know, getting the pain, um, but, but this is being time tested. So this is more to fill confidence and then what do we support? And this will only increase, right? So I, like I said, VS Code is going to be the default and now it's tech preview, it's going to become the, the, the default uh, stuff. So let's see the demo. I will, before we see the demo, um, so, so what we can do is you can let's, you, you could just do your development using dev spaces. And what all you can do, you can have an IDE, choose an IDE of your choice. Like I said, developers, you know, don't want to leave their comfort zone, zones and come. So you can bring your familiar tools, it'll be here. You want a particular IDE, yes, you could do that. And that, that's going to be soon a reality as well. So what we will try now is, I'm just going to take a Git URL and then see how quickly you can spin up a dev spaces and how quickly you can shut down and, and, and you know, you can just carry on with the remaining work. So let, let's try that. We'll come back to this after the demo. Okay, so I kept this ready. So this is how uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this on the dev sandbox. I'm not on the OpenShift cluster. This is, I just want to show that dev sandbox things are real. And it's a mimic of how it really looks on, on your OpenShift as well, right? So this is how typically um, it, it looks. This is the facade page of it. Um, and then you have spaces to create a new workspace. You can also see uh, on, on the left-hand side on some of the, you know, workspaces that I had worked in the past and stuff like that. And you also have a set of sample um, that you can, you know, start uh, off if you don't, you know, have an application in height. So we have dev files configured and all of that done here. Um, or you can, you know, just spin up an empty workspace and get going. So now I, I'll use my demo workspace. I'll put in the git hub URL and then I say, you know, create a workspace for me. So I'll just open up in the, in the next tab. Yeah, this depends on the speed and the strength of my internet. Yeah, it's quick. So if you actually see, it says I'm creating workspace. It's looking for a dev file. If it doesn't have a dev file, then it takes the default and it applies. Dev file is essentially the configuration file for your workspace. And then, you know, it, it starts creating. So if you go back to the dashboard, this is starting this workspace called the dev spaces demo. And here you also have logs. So it's pretty fast. Um, it, it, it's almost beginning to run. So it will now open up a nice visual, co I mean, you, you'll see a visual studio um, kind of feel. This is Eclipse Thea. If you actually see here in the URL, you would see Che Thea workspace. So the default workspace now is Che Thea. But in the future, we, you will have a new X to say, okay, I want Che Thea or I want uh, VS Code or I want IntelliJ and, we'll, and the list will keep improving. So this is how, uh, you know, uh, the workspace is launched. And then you could do, you know, you can do whatever you want. And this is as quick as you having a development environment and getting started. So this is as simple as that. You can bring in your own Git repository. And if I'm done with, uh, you know, whatever development I want to do, all I do is go back and say, stop workspaces. That's it. So this is as simple as get your Git, you know, wherever you, your source code resides, Put it there, it will spin up an environment for you with, with your familiar IDEs. You have all the tool sets, you don't have to install anything. Is it? All you need is a laptop and a browser. I think that, that's the basic uh, anybody has today, right? I mean, this is like having food and water in the house today. You know, having a laptop and a browser, I don't think is very tough. So your plain requirement is that, and once you have that, development becomes so much easier, simpler, and it, it's simpler because you don't have to install anything. It's as fast as you saw, and then it, it's as cloud native as you could. So this is what we, pro, we, you know, we idealized that a developer's life should be, and you know, we are continuously working to make that as seamless as possible. Let's get back to the. Um, this is a very small demo I wanted to show. Like I said, you could, you know, start an empty workspace and then you know get started. Or you could choose the list of, you can just put URLs of, okay, I want this. 
um, you know, repository with this uh, ID on, on the URL and it will start. So there are multiple ways of starting or you can just start off with a specific br branch of a, of a workspace uh, or, or stuff. So these are some of the free resources we have. Um, this is getting updated regularly, like I said. Uh, with the 3.0 release, um, we also revamped our documentation because the architecture and everything changed. So we ensured that we have a new shiny documentation as well. Uh, the upstream documentation is chair documentation and you will see what is going to come in the downstream six weeks ahead of what is there. And we also have a lot of community um, uh, developers who are contributing. And some of the important blocks that said why did we want to do 3.1 and some of what I've been talking for the last, uh, you know, the 20 plus minutes. And so what, what do I want from you all from this session is go to the developer sandbox. It's a 30 day free, you know, it's, it's mimicking um, OpenShift. You can try my product and see if I, last 20 minutes I bluffed or everything is a reality, right? So I will leave it there. Uh, you could always reach out to me at kmohan at redout.com. Um, we can interact if you have any ideas, yes. If you want to contribute to us, you have a great idea or you think whatever we're doing is not as great as you want it to be, please free to reach out to me and then we can get started. But yeah, try and tell me if I bluffed or I was truthful, so that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, It's a very good session, I enjoyed it. Thank you. I have one question, like uh, sure. if you have the code base locally, you can make local commit, right? Okay, I didn't hear you. If you have the GitHub uh, code base in our local machine, yes, you can make commit and then push it later. Yes. You so how does it work here? Uh, how does this work? You want to see that working, or you just uh, want to know? I mean, is it feasible in this uh, scenario as well? It does spaces. Yes, I don't have a. Uh, we I, I'll show that probably yeah. after during the coffee break or yeah. something. Yeah, Thanks. we can show that. Hey, like uh, we saw uh, GitOps. Now you explained about dev, dev space, right? Everything. Yes. Okay, starting from development till end, uh, right? Like we can connect, right? Everything Correct. now open. Yes. Open shift to yes. Container block. Yes. Okay, right click now. If I want to segregate, uh, saying right click, I will be using uh, dev, secops, uh, dev spaces. Mm -hmm. And like I want to maintain this uh, DevOps process on a different uh, environment altogether. Right click, that I'll is also get possible. that piece. Okay, I will do a kind of a development. And I've open shift with okay. the dev spaces. Okay. Okay. Now, right, like uh, from there, I wanted to uh, rest of the activities, right? CI, CD, everything. Like I wanted Correct. to do it on a different environments. Yes, you could. I mean, this is part of an inner loop, right? So uh -huh. this is all about once you are I mean, you, you are satisfied, and once you push to the outer loop, then you have a plethora of tools to carry on with the rest of the whole um, cycle. So yes. Okay. Okay. Like now, I am having my own proprietary IDE. How mm -hmm. to onboard uh, that into your dev spaces? May not. I mean, depends on how famous uh, how, how and stuff approach, it is. How to approach. I mean, you could. Um, one is you can reach out to the Che community and see. But but yeah, I mean, to be very uh, honest, adding a new IDE which is not being used. Not for the public. Uh, just like a couple of. Uh, you want to like, try your own uh, IDE on this? Yeah, you yeah. could. I mean, you can try that. I mean, maybe you can just put the URL of that, like I said, right, you can put your git and then the URL of, you know, which whichever ID you want to support. But at the uh, moment, I will not be able to guarantee you if it will work. Because for now, we are only doing a Thea, VS Code and IntelliJ. We have not the, tested. So technically, it should work. But, but uh, you know, I will not guarantee work, the... Right. That's not the problem. At okay, the moment, it may not work. I have to onboard it, it may not work. to... Yes, it may work. not work. And for us to onboard, it has to be... There is a being pre used. Yes, pre-process plus must be famous and others will also use, right? Because once it goes in, then you'll have to test and everything else, right? So, uh, it okay, I'll initiate a mail to you. Sure thing. Yes, you can send me and yes, we Thank can you. see if that works. But technically, yes. An ID is an ID, right? It should work. Yes. One is when you start the workspace and you're shutting down that. So, does it persist the changes like which are no, uh, at the staged? Moment. No. It, it goes off. It, it goes. Okay. So yes. it has to, we have to leave it open. Yes. I mean, for some time and then this is all about ephemeral development, right? So uh, okay. it doesn't persist. So there is no way we can persist no. the developers' not changes or not persisted. No. no. Okay. And, you know, 
this is okay if we have single repo, right? Typically in microservices, we have, you know, multiple repositories. I mean, it depends how we have Correct. implemented it. So we have to create one for each of them. Is it? I mean, every time. Yes. And at, at this point, we only have one workspace running at a time. Uh, it's in our roadmap to have multiple workspaces spinning up at the same time. So this at the moment, the architecture question. doesn't allow you to run more than one workspace at a time. Yes, sir. Yes. So all of this is configured in something called your dev file, right? I mean, that's where. And then your Git has your code. So it, it, this, is, this is all like, you know, a containerized application thing. So you just run on the browser, everything is in that container. So you, you put your Git repository where your code lies. Rest all is being taken care by dev spaces. So it just picks your Git where, where your code is. And you and your teammate will have similar environments because that's how it is configured in the dev file. So that's how it picks it up. It will not be saved. So that's when, when you log off, you know, because that's a security breach, right? We don't want to get into that. So once you log off, again you put it, yes. I mean, it, it, it uses the authentication from whatever your Git is at the moment. And then you have OpenShift to Earth as well. So it, it will not stay there or the code will not be saved. None of that will happen. So it's, it's as secure as you're doing it on your local. As simple as that. Which, if you use? Yes, yes. Yes, so the, the setting at this point doesn't allow you to. Yeah, so eventually we are, I mean, we are contemplating that thought, but at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, recently I started using uh, GitHub Core Spaces. Uh, like, I just want to know, like, how is, like, Dev Spaces different than Core Spaces? It's very similar, right? I mean, this is a, a similar product uh, okay. as this. Dev Spaces runs on OpenShift only at the okay. moment. I mean, Code Spaces will have its, its own because environment. Like it's a competitive product for us. Recently, like GitHub Code Spaces, like... Uh, yes, so they have, they have also, have. yes, GitHub recently. And, and they are using Che at some point in time. So if you actually read the documentation, they, they reference to Che and stuff okay. like that. But all of these products fall under the, the same stuff. It's from a different uh, competitor. Okay. They're similar. Even the name... Sounds, sounded very similar to our old code-ready workspaces, right? So, thank you.